Masahiro Sakurai. I love this man. You may also love this man, but we'll talk about this man another day. Right now, we're here to talk about his wife, Michiko Sakurai, and the menus that she is responsible for developing throughout her gaming career. This is Michiko Sakurai's history in gaming. I'll be taking an artistic approach to her work as opposed to functional. Nearly every menu layout of hers works well on a functional and convenient level besides Smash 4's what I assume is going to be Ultimates, mainly due to this games and more selection that could have been split up into different sections or at the very least had a different title. That's all I have to say function wise. When it comes to deciding what job she had for each game she worked on, my main source will be the credits for each respective game. Let's begin. According to Kyoto Report, Michiko graduated from the Musashino Art University in 1997 and landed at a position at HAL Laboratory. Her first line of work was Kirby Star Stacker, a puzzle game released in 1998 that functioned similarly to Dr. Mario and Tetris. In this report, she was tasked with design on this game. I don't know exactly what she designed since the credits are in Japanese, but if her degree in overall career is any indication, she probably worked on this game's art, which is very soft and children bookish. Sakurai was also an employee of HAL Laboratory at this time, but he did not work on Kirby Star Stacker as Michiko had. Apparently, this didn't stop them from meeting one another, as they joined forces for a completely out there project, Super Smash Bros., released in 1999. Sakurai must have been impressed with her work on Kirby Star Stacker, as she was given more responsibilities on this project's development. She worked on nearly every menu, the character selection screen, Mark, I'm not entirely sure what this means but I assume the logo, Mario's design, Yoshi's design, and a few stages, mainly Dreamland, Sector Z, and Mushroom Kingdom. Her art style wasn't fully realized in this game, it's only until Kirby 64 The Crystal Shards released in the year 2000 where we begin to see some personality. But before that, here's a piece of trivia, ever since she and Sakurai worked on Smash 64, she would then only work on games where he was involved even in games where his involvement was minimal, such as this one, where his only job was voicing King Dedede. I just thought that was cute. Anyways. The UI design here is quite clean and straightforward. You can combine copy abilities in this game, and Michiko decided to illustrate this fact by having three green diamonds link the two copy ability slots together, which is some great attention to detail. In addition, the bright and cheery colors perfectly fits Kirby's aesthetic, and fitting the aesthetic is something that she's only going to improve upon. Enter... Released in 2001. This game has tons of futuristic set pieces, take Final Destination for example. In one part of the stage, the background shifts to a plane of hard-cutting green lines, which light up at random intervals, almost as if you're fighting inside a computer. Michiko adapted to this techno feel Melee was going for in her menus. When you hover over an option, it lights up and starts pulsating with energy, as if you're about to execute a program. It's unknown whether she did the background for the menus, but whoever did should also get props. This part here looks like corrupted lines of code endlessly filing downwards into nothingness. And if you look real close, you can see the words Smash Brothers clumped together, phasing in and out of existence. Next up is Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland, which was released in 2002 and is a remake of Kirby's Adventure for the NES, which was released in 1993. In this title, Sakurai gave Michiko the role as UI Design Chief, and she put that title to use. See, there wasn't much going on in terms of UI for the original Kirby's Adventure, which makes sense because it's an NES title, but that didn't stop Michiko from adding in these mechanical-themed menus that weren't there before just to spice things up. Moving along to Kirby Air Ride. Kirby Air Ride. Alright guys, I'm in love with you here for a sec. I boot up this game for the purpose of gathering footage to show off the UI, but now I just really want to play City Trial. Don't worry though, I can resist. No, I can't! Well, that was fun. Anyways, Kirby Air Ride was released in 2003, and according to Kyoto Report, Michiko was the art director this time around. Which is curious, since both of Kirby Air Ride's credit sequences cite her as the menu design chief instead, so which is it? The menu design chief supervises the work done by the menu designers. The art director supervises the work done by everyone in the art department. This includes menu designers, course designers, CG artists, and anyone else that's contributing to the aesthetics of the finished product. As I said at the beginning, when it comes to figuring out who had what job for a certain project, you should almost always prioritize the credits of the project, since that's the original source. 
Speaking of correctly identifying sources, there seems to be this misconception that Michiko designed the fantastic menus in Kirby Superstar, when in fact she didn't even lay a finger on that game, nor its remake, since she isn't included in either of the game's credits anywhere. In all actuality, nowhere in the credits does it specifically cite who worked on either game's UI. Instead, there's a list of designers, any one of them could have done it, and may I say that whoever is responsible for this great piece of work deserves utmost credit. Anyways, Michiko's iconic menu design started here with Kirby Air Ride. Take notice that the designs aren't all neatly aligned. She likes having them spread apart in varied locations so they stick out as much as possible and don't blend together. She furthered this idea of diversity by having colors play a central role. Each design has different colors, and depending on what was selected, the background would change to match that design's color. All of these techniques were used to ensure that players associated certain colors with certain modes. Blue is the color of the main menu screen before you've selected anything, and it symbolizes your freedom to choose whichever mode you want. Red is the color of air ride mode, symbolizing fast-paced, high-energy races. Yellow is the color of top ride mode, symbolizing all the chaos that's contained on a single screen of racing mayhem. Green is the color of City Trial Mode, symbolizing creativity in the player's decisions for how they wish to power up their machine. In addition, the shape and details of each design further established this symbolism. Air Ride's design is wide and sleek, with Kirby riding a warp star leaving a speed trail right behind him, again emphasizing that this mode is all about high-speed racing on long courses. Top Ride's design has a lot of circles, which is meant to represent how the courses are shaped, since they use tons of curves in order to fit everything on one screen. City Trial's design is sturdy, representing the many buildings you can find on the map. Michiko's menus in this game are spot on. She manages to convey what each mode is about through her designs alone. You may recall that Melee had color-coded menus too, but unlike Air Ride, which combined these colors with unique designs to really make them stand out, Melee only had its background change colors, while keeping its selections identical in nature. While it could have gone full force with its color coding like Air Ride did, it was probably for the best that it didn't as to preserve its computer-like aesthetic. Following Kirby Air Ride, Sakurai quit HAL Laboratory and went on to establish his own private agency called Sora Limited, which would help contract him as a freelance video game designer to different companies. It was supposedly founded on September 30th, 2005. Sources are shaky. We know it only has two employees, one of which is Sakurai himself. I wonder who the other one is. Quick notice, Michiko is the UI designer for every game here and onwards. She'll end up using the same design philosophy that she used in Kirby Air Ride, so as to not repeat myself, I'll only point out the unique parts of these upcoming menus. Sora Limited's first co-developed project was Meteos, a tile-matching game released in 2005. Instead of variants and shapes, Michiko opted in for making each design the same block shape to represent the objective of matching tiles in the game. Super Smash Bros. Brawl was released in 2008. This was the first game where Michiko's menu designs had notable animations applied to them, which added some welcome personality to the mix. Kid Icarus Uprising, a favorite of mine, was released in 2012. Fun fact, this was the first game where Michiko's surname was listed as Sakurai in the credits. Every game before this one had her surname listed as Takahashi. This means that she and Sakurai got married between the release dates of these two games. Anyways, Uprising's menus could actually be moved around using your stylus on the touchscreen, something I'm sure people would have enjoyed on Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS and Wii U, both released in 2014. Michiko didn't change much menu-wise about these games, which isn't a bad thing, but personally, I like seeing new goodies added every now and then. Finally, we've reached Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, going to be released later this year, 2018. Oh my Sakurai, look at this thing. I know some people may be put off by the huge circle in the middle of the screen, but I love that it contains the original eight fighters. That's just so cool. When you make your selection, the screen's perspective shifts a little bit. The whole color coding technique is back again too, but it's in full force now. It wants you to associate certain colors with certain modes, and dang does it look good. Sadly, since we can't view the credits for this game yet, we don't know what position Michiko had exactly. But after reviewing her past work, I think it's safe to assume that she definitely played a role in designing the menus here, wouldn't you say? So, why was going over her history in gaming important anyways? She did make some great menus for some great games, but she wasn't a huge player in these game success, so why did I bother? It's because I want people to realize that there isn't just one person putting in work for these kinds of games but a group, 
a team. I think Sakura in the WarioWare Do It Yourself video puts it best. いや、just like the man himself, I want to ensure that fans know there are many more people that come together to make the games that they love a reality. Michiko Sakurai is an example of one of these people, and she, like her co-workers, don't always get the appreciation they deserve for their efforts, since they're often overshadowed by much bigger names like Masahiro Sakurai's. Make sure to keep in mind, just as he does, that he couldn't have done it alone.